Hello friends, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on UFT. And this is Nish Kumar Singh with you for this session today. So or before we can really get started with this, uh, we are done but so far with different recording modes and we are trying to move into something different today that's called as creating script without application in UFT. So, so far I've been telling you that all right all you need is to update your uh, properties of the objects and their relevant information in the repository which will generally help you to prepare your script or maybe when you record your script it automatically gets captured and so far we just know that the object repository is an interface uh, between the application and the tool and the object and their properties are supposed to be present to assist you with preparing the script at the same time running the script. So today we'll be understanding how exactly we can create the script without using the application. So that means we are not going to store, we are not going to make use of the uh, object names, the properties, and we are going to prepare the script. And that's what the real time scenario is. Generally, when you say that when you're uh, preparing a test script, you do not really have the application with you because that's into development and it might arrive after some time and you are busy preparing your automation script. But it's, it, it, it is in the case of like unit testing, which you want to automate, but generally in case of regression testing, which you commonly automate, you do have your application with you. So you can go ahead with recording. But when it comes to the first release of an application where things are still in the development and you want to prepare the script of it, then of course, for those things is what we are trying to understand whether UFT can do that for you. If yes, then how? So that is what we'll be looking at. And of course, uh, the options what will be getting introduced to today is defining the new test object, updating from application, and uh, highlighting object in application. So of course, all these options would be under the object repository menu. And other than that, of course, you'll be working with editor view today to prepare your script. So let's get going. All right, so here we have got a new test all together to work with this concept and uh, we will not be making use of the application properties like we won't be importing any objects to the object repository here and we'll see. So generally the situation says that when you are working on automation, we say we all usually do regression testing. So when it is regression testing, of course, your application is with you. You can go ahead and record your script and maintain your uh, regression suites and uh, execute them at any point of time. But when it comes to unit test automations or integration test automations, you are supposed to prepare your script well before the module can arrive for execution. So the module is still into development and you are not sure that how the application looks like. But of course, the design may tell you about how the application hierarchy is, like what is the object tree and so on. For example, there's a parent object, as you can see on the screen now, we have a parent object and has uh, multiple child objects under that, where we have two uh, edit box, two buttons, maybe a help button, and there's a background and so on. So all we need to know is this hierarchy, the tree of the object, and then prepare our own script by the time the module comes to us. So for that, all you need to do is access to your object repository and use the option create new test object. That's the option which you use to create your own new test object. And here we can filter the uh, environment because uh, it will by default show you all the add-ins which you have imported. To understand more about add-in, you can visit my very first tutorial on the introduction of UFT, which will help you to understand that what are the add-ins. So right now we are working on an application which is WPF. Windows Presentation Foundation. So this is just to filter the classes which are associated with WPF application. So the very first thing is to start with uh, the parent object and to know this of course from the design documents or any such inputs about the application architecture that will tell you the first uh, parent object class. So all you're selecting here is the class of the object and it is WPF window. It's easy to find out. It's because it is in alphabetic order. So you can always scroll down to the last option. So imagine that I don't even know the names of it and I'm using some completely irrelevant. See, generally in organization, you make use of uh, 
the standards like object one, object two, parent one, parent two, and all. There's a proper standards, so which we call it as naming convention, which we use in automation. But just to make you understand the concept that it is completely away and can be still used as a part of automation script. So I'm giving them quite irrelevant name. So click on add. And if you can see here, the parent object is added with the class. Now to continue adding the child objects, we have to close this window. Otherwise you're free to continue here, but it will add the same parent objects. But to create a tree and create the child objects under this, all I have to do is close this dialog, select the parent and click on new test object once again. Now here, again filter this to WPF object, uh, sorry, uh, here and then you can drop down. The next object what we are supposed to create is the username text box. So the class is WPF edit and the name here, let me define it as user, uh, which is not the right name of the object. Click add. Now as you want to create all the child objects under the same tree, so you can continue working on the same test object window. You don't have to close and reopen it. So say the next object is PWD. So I'm giving it purposefully different than that. And then I switch to the win button, or sorry, WPF button, which is on the top as per alphabetic order. And uh, you just name it as like enter. And we know that it's a okay button, but we say enter and click on add. Once you're done with adding all your objects and properties, you can close this. Now to create another parent object after this, you have to select test object and then click on the new test object. So say for example here, and drop down, come to WPF window and say my page. Add. So as you can see, that has created a new parent. So you have to select the test objects before you can click that. So anyways, uh, we don't need this. So we can just uh, right click and delete this option so that it does not conflict with our preparation of the script. Once you're done with these steps, the next thing is writing the script. So it is easy to write it because as you have added the objects, no matter what it is, it gives you an autocomplete option. So it will help you to minimize your efforts in writing the script and also avoid that human error when you write your script yourself. So set and uh, the value is John for the username here. Remember VB script, the one which you see in the black is the VB script and it is not case sensitive. That means even if you go wrong with the cases, it's fine for it for UFT. But uh, when it comes to application, it is case sensitive. For example, the name of the object and the values from the drop down menus of the application and so on. So just be careful with the syntax because that nobody entertains. So WPF window again. And the last step is to click on the OK button. So we have got WPF button as the class and we got the name as enter dot click. So once you're done with this, of course, the next thing is to run it. So now say, assume that your application came from the development team and you realize that your script is completely different in terms of the name of the objects. And obviously if you run this, it is not going to execute. The second thing why it's not going to execute is of course, when you created the new objects, you did not add the properties and execution cannot happen without properties in automation. So we have just created the class and the name of the object here. So let's quickly move to the resources object repository and use the option called as update from application. So all you have to do is select the relevant object and map these objects with the one in the application and it will capture the properties. Now, does that mean it will change your name of the object or you have to change your script? No. Your name of the object would remain the same. The properties will get captured because finally it's the properties which are referred for execution. And even your script should not be refactored. It remains the same. It will work well. So let's see that right here in this video. So click on update from application. Please be careful. What is that you have selected to update and select the same object in the application. So it's my parent. Click on update from application and select the parent on the top. Confirm that it is the same thing. Okay. So as you see now on the right side, I've got the properties. So finally, these are the information which will be referred for execution, not this. So go for the next one user and say update from application 
and click on the text box. Say OK. Same way for password and uh, update from application, password. Say, for example, by mistake, you click on a different object, assuming that this is a win button, a WPF button, and you click on update and you click on username text box. So can you see there is a class difference? This is a button and this is a WPF edit. You press OK. UFT does not let you do that mistake because the classes are different. So you cannot go wrong even if you attempt to. So say OK and go for the right thing now. Update. OK button. Now just to cross check that what you have updated is absolutely fine. You can do a simple step to must just make sure that it is being highlighted in the application. So this is a button which is called as highlight in application to just make sure that your script and the object properties which you just updated are absolutely fine to execute. So click on this button by selecting an object and it will highlight. That is a blink. So highlight, OK button, highlight password, yes, and highlight user. Another reason why you can do this step is to make sure that because there are when there are two different uh, text boxes like username and password, but when it comes to repository, it goes in alphabetic order. So sometimes it is possible that you may map password field with username and username field with password. So highlighting would help you to do those cross verifications. Now, my script remains the same. My repository name remains the same. All I have to do is just run this. Let's see if it works fine. Fantastic. So you see that now we have not modified the script. So whatever effort we would have taken to prepare the script with those sample names, dummy names, it still works the thing. The reason is while execution, it actually refers the properties which you updated from the application. So not the script. But should we maintain the script all the time because now we know what the object names are? Yes, of course, you can change the names, but not in the script because script is always used to refer to the repository. So it creates a relation from the script to the repository, but for the execution, it goes to the respective properties to execute it. So if you know now, so to avoid confusions hereafter, you can rename them as per the relevant names. For example, my HP application. So whatever name, you know, I'm, I'm sure this is wrong still, but uh, you say enter and it gets updated in the script as well. So one simple step which you can take to avoid further confusions and you can still manage your script. Press enter and it gets updated. Password, just rename it. Password and hit enter. So that's all. Say enter. This is the name of the object is OK. Hit enter. So if you want later also, you can update it and everything else goes good. So that's all from here. Now today we understood how to make use of some of the options from the object repository, how we can create our script without having the application, without having the properties by creating our own test objects. And uh, based on that, later when the application comes, all you have to do is update the properties and get going with the execution. So stay tuned for upcoming videos, upcoming tutorials on EFT. We'll be learning a lot. There's a lot more to go. So in case you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Hit the bell icon to get notified about the latest videos. In case you have any queries, any confusion while learning these uh, tutorials, put it in the comment box so that I can help you. You can also request for any specific option so that I can skip the queue for you and prepare that particular video on this topic in uh, upcoming session. So beyond that, of course, there is a lot to explore. So keep practicing, keep learning, and 